name is Sankarlal Somani, a member of Bharatiya Sanskriti Sansan. Sir, may I know the, what is the relation between spirituality and science? Okay. I want to. Spiritual, I, I will give you the relationship between dharma and science. Okay. Uh, I'm not too impressed with the term spirituality because it's also undefined. It's another term. Uh, I'll come to give my comments on spirituality in a moment. But dharma, dharma is not only, is not, first of all, dharma is not religion. Because religion is just a transaction between the individual and God. I have dharma towards my body. I have dharma towards animals. I have dharma for Mother Earth. I have dharma for my family. Dharma for my community. So dharma is more wide, widespread and pervasive than religion. So this is very important. In my book, Being Different, I have a whole lot written on why dharma is not the same as religion. The dharma includes not only, it includes this word, this word of causation. Cause, effect, cause, effect. And since dharma is enacted, being satchitanand, taken form, understanding the form, understanding that I am Aham Brahmasmi, but I am living this life. I am now performing my role, I am doing the Leela, I am part of this, I am connected. So, being connected with that, performing my dharma, I need knowledge about the world, I need Vidya, I need Vidya about the world, I need Vidya about how things work, I need for medicine, for uh, progress, for economics, for astronomy for whatever I need Vidya to function. So part of dharma is to function and to function I need Vidya and science is nothing but Vidya. Science is basically uh, what we call modern science has basically added the quantification dimension. There are two things that modern science has invented and has developed uh, taken Vidya to the next level. One is quantifying. So it is not enough to say that there is gravitation but how do you calculate it? How do you calculate mathematically certain th things? And second is instrumentation. Making complex instruments, making sophisticated instruments, so measurements are more precise. That is, that is th because instruments have become so sophisticated, which were not there, and the math mathematics of representing nature has become so sophisticated, we often mistakenly think that it's something new called science. But it is that they are going to another level. Yeah. Now, there is another kind of vidya, and hence another kind of science called adhyatma vidya, the inner science. So when uh, Rishi is meditating, and this Rishi is making observations in his inner laboratory, it's a laboratory, he's making observations with a very clear mind in a higher state of consciousness, that is scientific because the laboratory, these things can be replicated, another person can also have that experience. It is not like I am some chosen person from God and what I experience, you can never experience, no such thing. Like in the case of science, whatever one laboratory has produced, another laboratory can replicate. So whatever Rishi has produced, whatever Sri Ramakrishna has experienced, others can. In principle, they can have it. Okay, maybe it's tough, maybe very few will achieve it, but it, it, there is nothing inherently banning it. Whereas in Christianity, a Christian cannot say that I am, I, I am, I am capable of having the Jesus experience. He cannot say that. Because it's, it's happened once, closed, it could only happen to the Son of God, not to an ordinary person. And so, others can't have the same thing. Similarly, in Islam, uh, it is not a valid a statement that any other person could have had or could in the future have the same experience as Muhammad did. You can't. That is why Prophet is very different from what we call a person, a rishi. Prophet and rishi are not the same because rishi is reproducible, not infinitely many rishis can come. There is no finality, there is no ultimate rishi, there is no one rishi only. You can have all kinds of rishis. And that's why we have Sri Ramakrishna in this modern era uh, able to achieve the highest states which uh, earlier people had. So you could have people in the future also. There is no closed closure on this. So this openness of experience, uh, of inner experience, is very interesting. And it's very much like modern science, that there is no unique laboratory who produce some experience nobody else can have. And there is no finality of scientific knowledge that others can't have more later. So, I think dharma is inherently scientific for the kind of reason I gave. Now, why I don't use the word spirituality is simply because it's very confusing. It's, it's like a lot of people saying anything and say spiritual. 
The word spirit, spirit is like Holy Spirit in Christianity, spirit. Spirit is something from the external that comes. The spirit arrives. You see spirits. Whereas for us, consciousness is not spirit. Consciousness is inherent. It is not something that comes Holy, like Holy Spirit has descended on somebody. This, they, they, that's how they are saying. Holy Spirit has descended on you and will help you. Holy Spirit will guide you. But in our case, it is not that some kind of a thing has come from an external agency to help me out. I already have that. That is what Aham Brahmasmi means. That is what Satchitanan means. I already have that. I don't need any external agency. So the idea of spirit is a kind of a dualistic idea. A little bit dualistic idea there. So it, you can we can discuss spirit and give it a new meaning, make it a Vedantin word, make it a different meaning. But why bother when we have enough vocabulary of our own? So I prefer using our own vocabulary is more precise and not easily digested.